Christina, hey, congratulations. A momentous occasion is coming up pretty soon with the solar eclipse. So, yes. uh, so, so tell us about um, this event uh, with uh, Nat Geo and ABC that's uh, com com coming up pretty soon. You know, it's an amazing opportunity and National Geographic and ABC have come together to broadcast the path of the eclipse from Mexico all the way to Canada. And they're positioning a number of National Geographic photographers along the pathway so that we can document it and so that we can talk to the people that are going to be around us that day. And, and just to express a little bit of the awe and wonder about what's about to happen. So, so tell tell us about your specific involvement on this project, um, and where are you going to be? Well, first of all, um, I'm incredibly honored to be included, and they have positioned me to be one of the last photographers. I'm going to be in Niagara on the Buffalo side, on the United States side, and I'm going to be in the observatory tower of the Niagara Falls uh, photographing the eclipse, and I'm going to be in touch with all the other photographers. They're going to be talking to me and telling me what they're seeing, sending me their photos so that I can comment on them, and it's going to be quite an extraordinary opportunity to to witness this. Now, this event, from my understanding, doesn't happen very often um, um, for, for ourselves. The last time this happened um, was, what, 2017, which, uh, which to some people, that's just a few years ago. But before that, I believe it was decades. Decades. And the next time that it's going to happen, it's going to be decades as well. We're going to be old people if we're still alive. It's going to be 2044. Oh. So, so yeah, it doesn't happen. And when you think about it for a second, uh, this has been something that has mesmerized humanity since the beginning. There are records of the Aztecs and the Mayan, you know, they used to have observatories and they used to record this type of event. It's the kind of moment that reminds us that we live in a very large universe where these galactic events are happening completely out of our control. And they remind us that we live on a very small and fragile planet and that the only people that we have are each other. So it becomes a unifying event for humanity and such an opportunity for us to be reminded that there's nowhere else to go. This is it. This is our home planet. And uh, we need each other and we need to protect it. Now, for yourself, did you photograph um, the solar eclipse last time back in 2017? No, you know, I didn't. Uh, I didn't happen to witness it. I was not in a place where it was shown. So um, this is unique. And for people that are 100 to 150 kilometers away from the eclipse, they might be able to see some of it. But it is worth traveling, you know, get in your car and go and travel to a place where the eclipse will be seen because it is once in a lifetime kind of thing. So as a photographer, how are you going to uh, photograph the solar eclipse? This is a very important question. So the most important thing to remember is that we cannot look at the sun with our bare eyes. So we all need to be wearing the special glasses, not just your sunglasses, but the special filter glasses. And if you're going to be photographing with your phone or with your camera, you need to have a special filter in front as well, either a neutral density filter or they sell special solar eclipse filters because otherwise your sensor will be damaged. So that's number one. And for photographers that have more of an interest, there's a lot of advice on the internet, but using a telephoto lens so that we can uh, actually get close up to what's going to happen and photograph that beautiful corona when we have totality, uh, that's the thing to photograph. For myself, I'm going to be in the Niagara Falls, and I hope to get the chance to include some of the falls with the eclipse, and we'll see. Well, as a professional photographer, you have all that equipment. <laughs> so so, so in reality, uh, for for many of us, we should should we should we try to do to how can you say imitate what what you're trying to do because uh because it, it sounds pretty dangerous in its own way <laughs> it is pretty dangerous and you do run the risk of damaging your your phone or your equipment but there are apps that they're selling now online so you can just you know go to an uh, search engine and look for apps to photograph the eclipse and they will provide you know they'll send you the filter and you know we're running out of time so you need to do it now <laughs> and i and i think um that they sell these filters for phones and apps with the instructions everywhere so yeah it's worth it now um 
Did did you uh, do uh, any uh, research in the science behind of uh, you know the the solar eclipse? Yes, I've been looking at a lot of um, YouTube videos. There's a whole solar eclipse university out on the internet where you can find a lot of data. But for me, the most fascinating thing to think about is what what kind of behaviors, uh, you know, the animals that as they experience the eclipse, how do they change their behavior? I'm interested in what scientists are going to learn, you know, as they're looking to to the sky with their telescopes on, on during the event. So all of these things to me are fascinating, and I think as a humanity, we're about to experience something really unusual and special, and we're all going to learn from it. Now, um, the the location at the Niagara Falls. Why will why will this uh, be perfect uh, for for you? You know, this is uh, when you work for National Geographic, you don't make requests. They tell you where to go, and this is my assignment. And I think I'm very lucky. Uh, I know that other National Geographic photographers are going to be in different locations. Uh, one of them is going to be photographing a wedding where several hundred people are getting married during the event. And they're going to be posting these photographs and we're going to be sharing them on TV. So tune in into ABC National Geographic. We're going to be broadcasting this live and, you know, sharing our comments, our photographs and what it feels like. Well, I, I have to admit, your photographs are beautiful. So I'm 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 not even sure the angle you're 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 going to capture if the, if whether the waterfall is going to be in the background or the foreground of. The I don't know. I don't want to jinx myself, but I'm I'm getting there a couple of days early because uh, one of the landmark, the hallmarks of uh, being a National Geographic photographer is that you have to scout your location. So I um I flew in from New Zealand to be part of this, and I'm getting over jet lag, and I'll be ready. Is your partner going to be uh, with you at, at this momentous event? No, he's not. He is on our boat on the Sea Legacy One. He's crossing from uh, New Zealand to Australia, and I'm going to be on WhatsApp with him and uh, to see what he's seeing and what he's experiencing at the same time. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess I guess we 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 all uh, could uh, wit witness this along with you on uh, what uh, National Geographic and a ABC uh, for for ourselves. So this is a this is going to be a very very exciting um, okay, um, occasion for all of us. Yeah, a unifying moment for humanity. So I'm excited to be there with all of you. <laughs> and uh, one last thing, our uh, after after. After the solar eclipse, are you going back to New Zealand to be a, on, on the you know, You know, I am actually going back to uh, Australia because um, speaking of unifying events, you know, we're all experiencing climate change. And one of the things that's happening this year is that the coral reefs are dying. So we're going to be there to film and document something that's very sad. And I hope that this reminder to humanity that we need to take care of our planet is something that our leaders and politicians hear. Well said, well said, Christina. You know, it's been a pleasure to speak speak with, with you again, and hopefully um, I will have a chance to talk to you again on your next assignment, hopefully not two, de two decades from now. Hopefully not. Thank you so much for a wonderful interview. Hey, thank you, Christina. Thank you.